Hi, Steve here at blessedhopeforever.com. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. And I hope you're having a wonderful day in the Lord. There's a lot going on. Uh, if you've been paying attention, hard to believe for me that, that Christians around the world are not seeing to a great extent what's going on uh, as it relates to end times prophecy. Uh, it is not my intention to try to uh, really uh, elaborate on so many things that so many others are talking about that are probably more polished at that than I am. Uh, at this point, I don't believe we need any more signs to convince us that we are nearing the end of the age, the closing of this present age, the present dispensation of grace we started out counting signs and uh, you know looking at all the indicators now if you want to call them signs or indicators uh, the, the popular belief is that there are no signs that will precede the rapture of the church we are at a point in which that could occur at any time uh, we don't need any further signs uh, I think we are so close, and let me back up a moment. Uh, we are pre-trib. Uh, if you're not pre-trib, none of this is probably going to mean anything to you. Uh, I think we're so close to Daniel's 70th week that we're seeing, beginning to see uh, the appearance of, of uh, what you would say, or what I would say is... Uh, indicators of uh, of the tribulation uh, period uh, particularly as as you read in Matthew chapter 24 in which uh, I need to talk about that a little bit because many Christians are confused about the events of Matthew 24 where the disciples came to Jesus privately asking him what would be the signs of the end of the age and of his return and uh, I think it's important to point out uh, right from the outset that at the time that, that Jesus was speaking uh, those words, there was no church. Uh, it's often been said that all Scripture is for us, but not all Scripture is to us, and that is absolutely correct. If you're writing a letter to someone, you're writing it, writing it to them. It may have some application to others apart from who you were writing to, but so it's for them. They may benefit from that, but it was not written to them. That's a simple, very simple uh, uh, explanation of that. Uh, we are pre-tribulational. We are dispensational in our theology. We understand that there is a distinction between the church and Israel that God has his program for the church and he has his program for Israel we believe wholeheartedly just as the Bible says that God has a distinct program for each uh, each were endowed with their own certain set of uh, principles uh, of, of guiding uh, rules uh, uh, there, it's, God governs uh, His people at, in different ways at different particular times. There are certain truths that apply to us today that, that were not, you couldn't say, applied to Old Testament saints. Same in, in reverse. Uh, certain things that apply to the Old Testament saints that don't apply to the church today and will not apply to tribulation saints. They're, they uh, they go into a period in which the church is has been raptured. It's gone. Uh, God's setting Israel aside in unbelief so that salvation could come to the Gentiles. His program for Israel was not, I guess what you would say, uh, eliminated. Uh, but postponed. 
God will again turn his attention back to the Jewish people to fulfill the promises that he made through them, through those various covenants that he made with them. We, as members of the body of Christ, the new covenant, the church, uh, in which there was no church, it didn't exist in Matthew 24, uh, we need to take that, con that seriously because we are to rightly divide the Word of God, study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the Word of Truth, and that includes uh, these dispensations. Uh, Pre-flood, there was a dispensation. Uh, in the Garden of, of, of Eden, uh, Adam's innocence before he fell, that was a dispensation. There's the dispensation of law. There's, a, there's the dispensation of grace. The word dispensation means, quite simply, uh, the management of a household. And so we are members of God's family, members of His household. We are of different generations, different ages, different groups. Uh, we all belong to Him. We are His children. But He manages us. He deals with us in different ways through various different dispensations. He's not going to... Uh, a good example would be is if you are a tribulation saint, if it so happens that you become a tribulation saint, uh, of course you can't if you're a member of the body of Christ, but if, if you are, uh, for some reason, you find yourself in the tribulation and God marked you out to be a tribulation saint, you were never inducted or baptized into the body of Christ, but you uh, were destined to be uh, delivered, saved through the tribulation period because Jesus Christ died in your place at the same time He died in the place of those who were members of the body of Christ. If you, if you are, then you can't say, you can't walk around during Daniel's 70th week and say that you've been baptized into the body of Christ, that you've been, uh, uh, you've been uh, indwelt uh, by the very fullness of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you have the Holy Spirit living within you, that will not be the case during that time. It is because we have that Spirit of God living in us. The church is unique. We have the, uh, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which is unique in all of, all of human history. The church is the only entity that, that has ever known that or experienced that. Uh, it was not true of the Old Testament saint. It will not be true of the tribulation saint. And in the same sense, the, if you're a member of the body of Christ today, the church, you can't, you can't, you know, conduct your life or or govern your life, uh, live your life under the Old Testament uh, principle of, of law. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't today walk around as if the tribulation has already begun and you're a tribulation saint and so on and so forth. And I hope you get the point. Uh, where is all of this headed? Uh, it's, it's a big question that's on the minds of most people. In fact, uh, I'm, I've, I kind of began this, this whole uh, segment here uh, referring to the disciples coming to Jesus privately asking Him when would these things take place. That's the question that's on the minds of most Christians, and I think it's worth looking at. We have a lot of ground to, to cover, to consider, you know, uh, when we talk about this subject, because it is all headed for its, uh, up. It's, it's going to reach its climax, and it's well on its way. You know, we've got the, the, the global economy to fa that factors into this. We've got the uh, environment that factors into it. We've got a new presidential transition now that factors into this. Uh, Putin, uh, I understand, uh, Russian President Putin is inducting foreign fighters into his military. There's the new... Uh, well, there's all the news concerning Syria, a major, major development, and I, I would suggest that that, that is, uh, uh, it kind of came upon us all unexpected. We, we all knew that there was, Syria was in Bible prophecy. We all knew that Damascus had a, played a role in this. That's Isaiah 17 as well as other passages. But we didn't realize 
I don't think any of us, it caught us all by surprise. The, the primary focus shifted from Israel and Gaza and the war with Hezbollah and Gaza, the Palestinians, to uh, Syria. And a lot of uh, other actors have become involved. Everybody seems to have an interest in Syria. The, the HTS, the, the radical Islamic group HTS, really an offshoot of Al-Qaeda. It's just sort of Al-Qaeda redefined. Uh, same thing. Uh, that's major news when you consider that, that you know we're looking at just north of Israel. And if you follow this channel, you know that I believe that Turkey has a major role, plays a major role in this, and I believe that they are the king of the north, uh, not Russia. Uh, I've done a video on Gog and Magog. You may want to go back and, and look at that. But uh, So Syria and Israel, uh, with Turkey involved, Damascus obviously involved. Everyone, everyone's wondering about Damascus. It's amazing how quickly that they moved. They basically moved at lightning speed from Aleppo. From when this began, I believe the whole thing sort of began uh, uh, not quite sure the exact day, but uh, it only took them like three or four days to get from Aleppo to Damascus. I think Islam is awake uh, as far as their perception of biblical prophecy. Uh, they have their own view of it. Uh, they have their own Bible, the, their own Quran, the, you know, the Quran. Uh, they, they are, I believe, just trying to usher in uh, uh, the, the new Islamic, uh, this new Islamic caliphate. This, uh, they would love to see a revived Ottoman Empire. Turkey would love to be the head of it, and particularly Erdogan. He's stated as much. Uh, it's interesting that President Trump is saying that we need to stay out of it, just mind our own business. We need to resolve, if we can, to in some way be helpful in resolving the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, but we need to stay out of the Middle East mess. Of course, that's going to be impossible to do. Uh, Israel, of course, is dead asleep uh, as far as as Israel goes, they have an entirely different perspective on this than we do. Their blessings are earthly, uh, not heavenly. Uh, uh, they don't believe in the Messiah. They don't believe in the New Testament. They don't believe in, in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. God set them aside in unbelief so that salvation could come to you and I. So Israel... Uh, for lack of a better term or expression, I think Israel, you could say, is just dead asleep on, on, on all of this, the stuff that concerns us and the stuff that we're looking at. There's been a tremendous advancement in uh, weapons technology. We're looking at drones flying all over the place. It's amazing how quickly uh, drones became uh, an everyday part of our lives. Uh, both uh, as it regards, uh, you know, just personal use and recreation, uh, to work, to uh, uh, to our work, our employment, and to our military, the militaries of the, of the world. Uh, these global r leaders now that now that they know that Trump's going to be back in office are are reacting to Trump, and. Uh, it was quite an historic uh, election this year in, in many regards. As of the 3rd of December this year, the, uh, over 46,000 people, uh, roughly 44,000 Palestinians, uh, 1,700 Israelis have been reported killed in the Israel-Hamas war. That includes uh, uh, journalists, media workers, academics, uh, humanitarian aid workers, including 179 employees of, of the UNRWA, 
which is a, an agency that supports the relief and human development of Palestinian refugees. 643,000 dead in the Russia-Ukraine war. That's to date. That's of, as of December of this year. So total so far, roughly, uh, plus or minus a few, we're looking at 689,669 dead, over half a million. And it appears that we have the threat of war, at least the threat of World War III, hanging over our heads like the sword of Damocles. Uh, and the use of nuclear weapons. Something that really I find interesting is Israel took over Mount Hermon. Hermon. Uh, as you know, its, its summit straddles the border between Syria and Lebanon. And it's about 9,000, a little over 9,000 feet above sea level. It's the highest point in Syria. In the book of Enoch, the apocryphal book of Enoch, Mount Hermon is the place where the watcher class of fallen angels descended to earth and took wives among the daughters of men. Enoch 6. Uh, and now God's people, Israel, are in control of it. I'm not going to post any links. I don't want you watching this stuff. I have reasons for that. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I am absolutely convinced that, that it, not to say that they, this hasn't occurred in the past and hasn't been occurring, but in an unprecedented way, I believe that demonic entities, uh, demonic forces, Supernatural demonic entities are directly, not indirectly, but directly communicating with the occult uh, through symbolism, uh, encrypted videos with hopeful messages about the future, and this man's, uh, well, uh, uh, they use terms uh, just as we are watching for the Lord to return, and we, we feel like we're living in a prophetic, in, in, in the end times, prophetically, there are those who are on the other side of this equation who talk about their great awakening. They talk about the harvest that's to come. This, these are the phrases they use. They even refer to themselves as the chosen ones. They have this vision of utopia and how man is evolving to a more, uh, well, just to a better, I don't know, grade of, of human uh, species. I've talked a lot about, I've, I've often mentioned my belief in the fact that, that the wheels of prophecy turn slowly. It is so tempting to look at end times events and, and say, well, okay, you know, it's going to be fulfilled in chronological order, in succession, this has to happen, and then this has to happen, and then so on and so on and so forth, and they happen sort of in some order or arrangement. That may be true to some extent, but that's not how it's appearing to me at this point. It's appearing that prophetically it appears that God has placed a if I could use this analogy, he's placed a lot of dry ingredients in a mixing bowl in which, uh, uh, you know, uh, stirred it all up together, uh, where that uh, parts of, of all these things are beginning to be fulfilled uh, in the present time. It's not that just, well, you know, one thing and then a, the next thing and then the next thing, but it's all coming together sort of together in a way that's together. It's it, it, it like, you know, like putting a lot of dry ingredients in a mixing bowl in which, uh, you know, it's all sort of blended together, but uh, in which, you know, wet ingredients will be added later. 
uh, stirred, blended before the kneading takes place and the final baking phase takes place. You, almost like God's baking a cake here and he's uh, it's going to be wonderful when it comes out of the oven but it's there's a lot of work involved in it and it takes a lot of ingredients and all these gre ingredients kind of get mixed together and this is kind of how I look at it uh, Revelation is not typically it's it's not uh, chronological it kind of jumps ahead and jumps back and jumps and then you know jumps back ahead again it's not it's not chronological it is to some extent but not wholly the uh, and this, uh, as far as this watching goes that we've been doing for eight years, uh, the, the entire breadth or the scope of it all, it, it tends to dominate uh, our lives. It, it, it tends to be a dominant factor in our everyday life, and that never was the case before, and I believe that in and of itself is a sign of his near return. Uh, my life changed. I, I don't, I'm not sure if yours did. My life certainly changed. It wasn't just because of the ministry, this ministry. It was my life changed in the sense that uh, whereas before I was kind of, you know, clodding along, you know, uh, with, with future end-time events in, in the back of my mind, it's now at the forefront of my mind every waking moment. Uh, and I think that is for a great number of Christians. And it is no doubt growing in intensity. Now, I mentioned Matthew 24. Uh, I do want to touch on a verse there that I think you may find interesting. I know I do. It's uh, which is uh, in which, we, as I said, we need to make a dispensational distinction here. We're looking in, in Matthew 24 in which there was no church. No church existed. Uh, the Lord had yet to, uh, I guess, officially, you might say, set Israel aside in unbelief. He's still dealing with Israel. He's presented Himself as the Messiah, as their King. Uh, the disciples are, are absolutely unaware of what is to come. Uh, they, uh, you know, uh, I'm the first to admit that if the Lord had returned one week after He had ascended, these believers uh, in Him, uh, and I'm, I'm speaking of before the church began, okay? This is... I don't want to try to make this too complicated, but I need you to, to, to if you can possibly do it, I, I need you to try to separate, uh, distinguish in your mind between God's program for Israel and God's program for the church. If you look at the church as it, as it truly is, it's a parenthesis because it was a mystery. Okay, it was... A parenthesis in between... Matthew 24 and the tribulation period. Uh, they came to him asking him what would be the signs of his near return. Verse 6 in, in chapter 24 is interesting. Uh, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now it is so easy to read that verse and say, okay, Pastor Steve, we're, we're hearing of wars and rumors of wars, so we're not to be troubled, uh, for all these things must come to pass, but the end's not yet. It's too easy to do that. It's a little more difficult to be more honest with the text and to read that from the, from the perspective that well, this is what they taught me in Bible college. The first thing you want to do is you want to ask, who is he speaking to? Is he speaking to you? 
here. No, he's not. He's speaking to those who were his disciples, those who were his, those who were Jews, those who were alive at, at the time that these words were spoken. There was no church. There had been no Pentecost in Acts. The Holy Spirit had not come. Jesus Christ had not died, been buried, raised from the dead. When it, when it comes to application, we have to make that distinction. If we don't, then we're going to the epistle of the Hebrews and we're reading that as if we're a Hebrew. And trust me, uh, we're not Hebrews. Or at least I'm not. And probably you aren't. Unless it just by some chance some Jew in Israel is listening to me and he's a Hebrew. I, I doubt that you're a Hebrew. It is even called the epistle to the Hebrews. Okay? So when we study the epistle to the Hebrews, we need, we must take into, factor into this, we need to take into account that the most important, one of the most important facts, and that is that he's writing to them, but it, it's for us. Let no one say that I'm suggesting that, well, you can take that part of your Bible and throw it away because it's not for us. It is for us. All of Scripture is for us, but not all of Scripture is to us. Okay? Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now, rumors of wars. That's, that bothered me for years. I didn't understand. Well, well what does it mean, rumors of war? I'm going to hear of wars, and then I'm going to... That's the real wars. And then I want to hear rumors of wars. That's, they're not really wars. They're just rumors of war. And that's what that means. And if you take the simple approach, I guess that's probably the conclusion that you come to concerning that verse. I think the, the real dynamic there is far, far different than that. I'm going to share that with you. First of all, let's, let's d define the word rumor According to the dictionary, just almost any dictionary, it, it basically says that what a rumor is, is it's a, a currently circulating story or report of uncertain or doubtful truth. This is how we in the West use the word rumor. Well, it's, it's been rumored that so-and-so is going to run for election. No, it's, uh, the verb... Uh, of that is to literally means to be you know to be circulated as an unverified account. You know it, it's rumored that he lives on a houseboat. You know that's so. So when Christians read that, and when you read that, and when I read that, we we look at that and we tend to go, well, okay, what that's saying is that's saying that on the one hand we're going to hear of wars that are real and then on the other hand we're going to hear of wars that really aren't wars they're just rumors it's, it's made up it's not true it's they're really not at war these really aren't wars they're not wars okay they're just rumors of wars so therefore it's not accurate accurate to say that they're wars now i hope you're with me so far here so let's go and look at it in the greek if you have anybody that has a Greek in a linear, you can easily do this. It's uh, you will begin. Let's stop. Let's start with that. The verse says you will begin. Okay. Now, right away in my mind, my what some people would call a twisted mind. Right away, I, I, when I read the words "you will begin," that to me infers or implies. A, something that is a begins it there's a process and it has an ending okay you'll begin and it's a future it's a verb uh, uh, future active indicative in the future you will definitely indicative mood actively uh, you will begin to hear to hear of that's one word, akouane in the Greek, akouane, to hear of. Let me say that again. Akane, akouane, akouane, to hear of. Now, it's from the root word akouo, meaning to hear. Faith comes through hearing and hearing through the Word of God, same word. 
Same word. The word literally means to hear. It's from the root word akuo. It's akuain because of the the translators. Uh, that's why they, they said to hear of. You, you'll begin to hear of wars. Now then, so uh, once again, it's easy to say, well, okay, we, man, we're, that's, that's all we're hearing about, you know. I'm so, so surely Matthew 24 must be coming to pass. Hold on. Don't jump the gun here. Now, as much as you may want it to be, I, there's a difference, folks, in what we're seeing and, and how it matches up to the text. Uh, there will be a time in which they will begin after the church is gone to hear of wars and rumors of wars just as we are now but it, the difference here that I'm trying to make you that I'm trying to I'm ho I hope I'm explaining is so important here it's it's I hardly know how to explain this properly the only the difference is is, is then and now it's the difference is context. The difference is his, the historical setting in which it was spoken. The the application in which it, it, it in which it carried to to where it carries forth. Uh, it doesn't mean we can't gain anything from the text. It doesn't mean that that the same thing really couldn't be true of us. But but to be strictly adherent, to strictly adhere to the text and not stray from the context, we have to look at that as something that hasn't yet really come to pass, but will come to pass okay, during the tribulation period because that is the context of Matthew 24. I can't emphasize that enough. The church, again, the church was a mystery. The Lord wasn't about to sit to answer that question in, in the sense of, of saying to the disciples, well, okay, you know, the, we, now hold on, I, I'm going to tell you, but let me tell you about all this stuff that has to happen before that, and that's the church. No, he, he jumps over, the church is a parenthesis, he jumps over to, in his answer, to what will happen after the church is gone. When God, again, turns his attention back to Israel to complete the program that he began, for Israel. Now, the word I meant, as I mentioned, it's from the word akuo. Faith comes through hearing, akuo. And, so you have this and, this connecting conjunction, which connects the two thoughts together. And, not only will you begin to hear of wars, but, or and rumors of wars. Now the word there for rumors got some, got a big surprise for you folks. It's not rumor. It's it's the word that the translators used because and, and don't ask me why. I've been trying. I've been wondering about that forever. Uh, I think back even when the translators translated that they had the eye they, they fully understood the definition of the word rumor which i gave earlier to you here it doesn't say that at all folks the text does not say that at all it doesn't say you will begin to, to hear of wars and rumors of wars as if these are wars that they're really not wars they're just rumors of wars that's not what the text is saying First of all, the word there is the same, has the same root word as the word before. All right. The hearing, you will hear, you will begin to hear a kuo, okay, of wars, and a kuo of wars. Same word, same word. You'll begin to hear of, of wars and and 
connecting conjunction and hearing of wars. You'll begin to hear of wars and hearings of wars. Now this is strictly what the Greek says. Now, that, is, uh, that happens to be the second one, the, the rumors, where you see the word rumors used. It's, it's a, a koaz, a, a koaz. It's still from the root of the word akuo, to hear. It is, a, it is now not a verb, it's a noun. It's plural, okay? It is... Uh, I, I hate to go into a whole lot of the gra grammar. The, it's, it's feminine. It's not masculine. It is a, it's not a, it's a noun. It's not a verb. It is a, it's an active. Here's what the text is saying, and this is you can just take the, take this for what it's worth. Uh, I don't ask anyone to believe me. I believe what the text is literally saying is is that these disciples, or those at that time, okay, at the time uh, in which this would 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 play out, Matthew 24, during the tribulation period, and it's interesting that he starts with this. Okay, take note of that. He doesn't start with, well, uh, and you'll begin to hear, you know, see earthquakes or hear of earthquakes. Or, no, it's wars. It's wars. I think that's important to take note of. I think the text is literally saying in the original manuscript, in the original Greek, looking at the, the grammar, looking at the definition of the words, looking at the, the, the meaning of the words, I believe that what the text is literally saying, what Jesus literally said was, you will begin to hear of wars and you will continue to hear of wars. That's all you're going to hear about. Now, now, we have, now we, we're asking the same question. We're, we're, we're kind of, you know, I guess we're kind of going, well, isn't that, it, I can hear someone now, Pastor Steve, isn't that exactly what we're seeing? We're, 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 we're just, you know, is this stuff going to stop? Is this going to stuff, is all, all this that we're seeing, is it going to go in reverse? It, are these, the, this, this, all this conflict in the Middle East, is it going to somehow be resolved? Trump's going to come in and make everything, he's going to, I don't know, usher, Trump's going to usher in this new era of peace and prosperity and, and everybody's going to get along and everybody's going to be happy and there's not going to be any... Is that, is that what's going to happen? And I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think anybody thinks that's, what, that's going to happen except those who are directly involved in it who are trying to bring it all to an end. But as far as you and I are concerned, folks, if you were to be honest with yourself, I think that you would... I think that you would believe, you would accept the fact that we are so near his return that we're not going to see an end to this. And I think that that's what the, the, the text is saying. Now, since we're the church, we're not the tribulation saints, we're not the context of Matthew 24, how close must we be to all this? Well, quite close. Now, uh, what is the significance of Syria? Uh, it's, it's Aram in the Bible. Uh, some translations uh, of the Bible use the word Syria. Other, others use the word Aram or Aram. But both, both uh, names refer to the same nation. The, the borders of Syria or Aram are much the same as they were in biblical times with a central location being uh, its capital, Damascus. And as you know, Syria, uh, Aram plays a significant role throughout the Bible. Uh, after the flood, the mentioned in Genesis, uh, Shem, he, one of Noah's sons, he became the father of Aram, whose descendants became the, the people known as the Arameans, who settled in the area of Mesopotamia. So if you see the word in, in the 
Bible of Mesopotamia probably refers to, to the uh, Arameans, the Syrians. Uh, same as if you see the word Aram. Uh, they, they fought with Israel a lot in the Old Testament. One of the earliest conflicts with, with them was during the time of the judges. Uh, they, the Israelites became subject uh, to them for eight years because of their idolatry. We read about that in Judges chapter 3. Once the, the Israelites repented, God raised up another, uh, uh, Caleb's younger brother, to free them from the Arameans. And then during the time of the kings, the Arameans often fought against Israel, especially in David's reign. Uh, Interestingly, Paul's conversion experience happened in the geographical location of Damascus in Syria. That's interesting. Uh, controlled by the Romans at that time. As you know, Paul saw our Lord re resurrected Lord on the road to Damascus where he was traveling to persecute Christians. And on that road, Jesus commissioned Paul to be the apostle to the Gentiles, stating, I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I'm sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified, sanctified by faith in me. Uh, it was also in a Syrian city, Antioch, Antioch, that believers in Christ were first called Christians. This certainly has to do with us. And I would keep your eyes on it all if I were you. Uh, uh, the church in Antioch was, was destined to become the base of operations for Paul's mi missionary, ministry, uh, missionary journey. S folks, we have front row seats to what's playing out in real time, which is what I believe is a, as to use the same analogy, it's a mixture of prophetic fulfillments that are, Biblical uh, prophecy that's fulfilling uh, right bef being fulfilled right before our eyes. And I guess you could use the term, the stage is being set. That's an old-fashioned kind of phrase, a way of putting it. Uh, I, would, I don't think I'd be incorrect by telling you that the stage is being set. But I think it's more than that. I don't think it's just the stage being set. I think there's, there's the, it's playing out. There's, you know, uh, what is it they call it? And when you have a play, you have certain acts. And these acts are playing out. But I see it as all coming together in a way that we, no one could ever predict. It is quite exciting to watch. I hope that you will continue looking up for our Lord is coming again soon. I want you all to know that we love you here very much. I, I love you all dearly, and I pray for you constantly. Please continue to pray for the direction of this ministry. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.